What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video and today we'll be painting this boat. So the goal is to paint this thing for under 50 bucks. I went to Home Depot, bought about 50 bucks worth of stuff. I painted a boat, um, a 14 footer, the same way I'm about to do this except I stripped it down to bare aluminum because the paint was terrible. It was like really thick uh, paint that was chipping in different places. So I took it down to bare aluminum. My goal for this boat for labor, like labor wise, is I really don't want to take this thing down to bare aluminum because the paint really isn't all that bad. Like it's a good paint and I think if I just sand it down smooth enough and then make sure I prep it right, we'll be alright. So that's the plan. Now the other thing is we're not painting the whole boat. We're going to leave this underside this gray color and we're just going to give it a nice clean um, because I don't want to have to worry about painting the bottom because one that's a whole other process. But two, I feel like that two-tone look would just give it something a little bit different and look really cool. Um, also, it's not too scratched down here. Like, it's got those scratches. But, like, you don't notice them because of the gray color. So, I kind of want to just leave it gray. And I feel like I won't worry about it nearly as much if I don't paint it. Because I won't be worried about the paint that I'm ruining. Because, like, truthfully, I haven't even seen half this stuff yet and I'm just looking at it. So we've got to get these decals peeled off and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to be taking a propane torch, you guys can see mine down there, and then um, a scraper. I have it somewhere. Yeah, like this. Just a little razor blade scraper. This just holds like a single razor blade, makes it easy so your fingers don't get all jacked up from just holding a regular razor blade. But we're just going to put some a little bit of heat. You really don't need much. It's just to get the adhesive a little warm. That way it's not as tough and then you're just gonna go down and we're gonna try our best to get this stuff off. I already did the TX 150 and that didn't take too long and it wasn't bad at all. So with that said guys, let's get into it. guys we got the decals off of the left side of the boat and it didn't turn out too bad um, the letters are actually really easy I just had to peel a corner and then they all kind of came the the difficult stuff was definitely the numbers and all that junk obviously needs sanded well but we got this side which is pretty much the exact same thing that we got to get done so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that
All right, guys, so we got the back painted, um, and that was more so just a test. It, it came out looking decent. It's not perfect, but it's also not terrible. Um, but I thought about it, and I was like, by the time I get this all sanded down to what it needs to be, because these decals are not easy to get off, I could have just taken the time and just stripped it and done it completely right, and it would have been perfect. Um, and that's the way I'm familiar with it. Like I said, I'm not too good with paint. This paint doesn't seem bad like I'm not worried about painting over it. It's just by the time I sand this all down, I could have already had the whole boat basically, you know, completely stripped of paint and it would have been perfect. So I got this. We're going to try it out. I've got one other thing if this doesn't work, but this goes on an angle grinder and it's supposed to, you know, do a good job. So I got one of these and then I got one other thing if this doesn't work, but we're going to go ahead and try this. We'll probably try it on the inside or something just to test it, make sure it doesn't chew up the hull or anything. But the plan is now to strip this and then paint it so it's gonna take a little bit longer but I thought about it and I was like if we're gonna do it why save the extra day or two let's just get it done right so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna get this all hooked up and we'll get at it alright guys so we got it all hooked up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it on this because this probably isn't gonna stay inside the boat so I'm just gonna test it because it's the same kind of paint we're gonna make sure it doesn't chew up the hull and then we can actually start doing it on the, the outside and all that good stuff so here we go. I mean, it's kind of rough, not going to lie, but I think it'll be fine because that's kind of how it was before, but it takes it off insanely quick. Like, very quick. I need glasses, though. This is 80 grit sandpaper. Um, so that's what I was going to hit it with first. And then I'll probably go over it, since I already bought the sandpaper and opened it. I'll probably go over it with, like, the 120 and the 220 maybe after just to get that nice, smooth finish. But uh, that is going to save us a lot. So we are probably actually going to start in the back because I'll just work my way forward. And, uh, yeah. So we hit it with that grinder, um, that sanding wheel, and it did a pretty good job. You have to be a little bit careful because it will, um, if you hold it in one place too long, it will like get a little deep. You can kind of tell on these rivets, especially like if you go over these, it will start to flatten out a little bit, and that's not what you want. So you just got to be careful. Um, so I tried to avoid the rivets. That's why like this area isn't as good, but I'm going to go back over with 120 grit sandpaper and sand it all smooth that we don't have any of those inconsistencies that show through the paint but after a couple coats of paint it'll be fine but you guys can see like right here I hit with the sandpaper you can see how smooth that is compared to like even right below it where I didn't hit it so we're gonna hit that with the orbital sander I'm thinking and uh, just do our best to get it off so we'll start over here and work our way down I guess
guys, so for the most part, this side is pretty much done. Um, I do have a little bit more on the side rails to get, but as you guys can see, it's pretty stripped down to bare aluminum now. I will say, with that sanding wheel, if you go, like, too long over something, then it will, like, actually start to take away some of the aluminum. So you do have to be really careful. Like, I'll show you, for example, like, going over these rivet heads, it made some of these really flush and like this one to the point where I'm probably gonna just go ahead and replace that rivet. Um, it's just one for the side rail, but still, like if you leave it there for too long, it will, um, you know, dig into the aluminum a little bit. Now you don't really have to worry about it. The only reason like I'm able to show you the rivets is because they stick out, so they're a little bit more like susceptible to being hit. But other than that, it worked fine. As far as like how deep it goes. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but after I sanded it, it's not too bad at all. I think the paint will take care of it just fine. I'm not too worried about it, but this thing's pretty much sanded um, to the point where like I can't feel that, so I think it'll be fine. Um, but we've got this whole side sanded, and I kind of want to just start painting now because I'm really irritated with this whole sanding thing. It just takes a while, but there's so much dust with it that you got to be really careful. So this side's done. I did this in probably four or five hours total, um, which isn't terrible, but that doesn't mean I still don't like it. Whoops. Um, I also got the back kind of done, started at least. So for the most part, that's pretty good. Um, we still got to do the insides. So that's, I'm not too worried about those. Like those don't need to look perfect. But uh, we'll probably just do the same thing we did. And those really won't take all that long with that uh, thing on the grinder. I can just whip through those real quick and then take the orbital sander and just quickly hit everything. So I'm not too worried about that. But we got a whole other side to do. So that's the bad part. So we got another at least four or five hours ahead of us just on this side. But hopefully we can get it done quick. Now I know what I'm doing at least. There's a lot more rivets on this side too. Uh, especially up here. Well, not a ton more, but there are more. But... Uh, yeah so hopefully we get this thing sanded and cleaned because then what you guys can see how much dust this produces like i did not even sand like this area like on the inside or anything i did sand that and i sand a little bit of this but just look how much dust just like terrible but you guys can see that paint turned out pretty good also i am not gonna film anything on this side. I'm sure you, I have plenty of footage of me sanding and me grinding away paint. You guys can literally see my hands. I have no reason to film this. So I'm just not even going to film this side for you guys. I will let you know when it's done though because then we'll move on to a different type of prep uh, with some chemicals. We got to clean it. We got to put you know, some stuff on it before we can actually throw some primer on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's going to take me forever. And I'll catch up with you guys when I'm done. Alright guys, so we got the boat pretty much sanded down completely. We've got the insides done. We've got the outsides done. We've got this side. This was the first side, so this one's a little bit more rough, I will admit. The other side definitely came out better. Um, you guys can see that right there. Definitely came out a little bit better. I kind of figured out what I was doing by the time I got to this side, so... Everything went smooth there, but really I stuck to that 80 grit wheel that I showed you guys with the grinder And then I also went over everything with 120 in some spots with 220 grit sandpaper to get them a little bit smoother um, I also used a wheel on the inside. It's like uh, I'll show it to you guys. I used one of these wheels that I found in the garage um, From my first build I used it. I used one of these to strip an entire boat uh, my first build and I it just took forever so that's why I didn't do it this time but you guys can see if you want to take the time these do not like mess with the aluminum at all so you guys can really just use this maybe hit it with some sandpaper if you want but you don't even really have to and you won't see the marks that this makes so this is really nice but it takes a long long time personally if I were to do this again in my situation I think I would do the same thing but if you have access to running water because it's currently freezing outside if you have access to running water just get some paint stripper get that stuff off and you'll be good to go you won't have to deal with any of the sanding any of that stuff just you know get the the paint stripper and then power wash it off that's personally what I would do um but as far as painting so you guys can see I didn't touch the bottom that's because it's staying that color the black is going to be on the sides and on the inside. It'll be the same color as the back. And that turned out pretty good. I didn't spend nearly as much time messing with that as I did this. So hopefully this turns out a lot better. But um, 
we're gonna go ahead and tape all this stuff off. We're actually, we'll, we're gonna tape it right here where the seam is. And then, um, yeah, I think that's about it. We're just gonna go ahead and start doing that. I'll probably put the GoPro on for that. Hopefully we can start painting today. I still have to clean the aluminum off. I just like got it all vacuumed up from all the the dust. Make sure you guys wear a mask with this stuff. It's intense. Plus if you have an old boat, there's a good chance it's not very good paint for you. And uh yeah, so just wear a mask. Other than that, it went pretty smooth. This is the part where you guys can kind of just do whatever as long as you get it good. It's fairly smooth. I think it's smooth enough where you won't see it through the paint. Hopefully that's the case. If not, oh well, it's a John boat. start on the inside we're gonna see how it goes I'm not too worried about this like you guys can see this is all sanded but it's not like completely stripped and same with down here I've just got it sanded enough to where it should be fine um but yeah I just this is the stuff that I hit with that one wheel that I was telling you guys about but we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the same primer self etching from rust-oleum not only is this self etching but we also did the vinegar thing which is supposed to help so with that said let's Get at this. Alright guys, that is the first coat of primer on that side of the boat. It came out good. got this thicker tape which I think is gonna work better because I'm gonna put one edge down and then the other edge I'm just gonna leave up if that makes any sense So now I think we cut out a piece of film about that long. I'll just try this. And then we'll just come underneath this tape that we didn't stick and push this film against it. Oh. 
So the boat is pretty much all wrapped up. We've got the front and both sides done. I haven't done the back yet, but we're not gonna paint the back for a second. We're about ready to hit this with some primer and uh, I gotta move all this stuff out the way so I actually have some room to, to spray and make sure it's good. But here's where it counts, guys. This is where you gotta make it good. So the inside turned out great as far as primer. Like it's really even. It looks really good. Like if I were to leave it like the paint like this, I wouldn't be too upset. Um, I would do a little bit different, but you know, it, it's settling good. The the texture looks fine. There's no crazy indents or anything like that. So hopefully this goes just as well and looks just as good. Cause with the black that'll all look good. Um, but I think we're gonna start on this side first. This is gonna be the side that maybe doesn't look quite as good because of the aluminum, but uh, I think it'll be all right. So let me get all this stuff at least moved enough so that way I have enough room to paint. And then uh, I'll throw the GoPro on and we'll start, we'll start hitting this thing with some paint. So let's do it. Alright guys, so it's been about an hour and this thing is dry. Now, I am going to say one thing. It's got a texture to it. You can see it when it's up close. Um, we aren't going with a gloss paint. We're going to go with a semi-gloss paint. So we'll see how much it hides because the matte hides it fine. Like you can't see that really. And if I went with the matte paint, it probably would have been fine. But that wasn't the plan. And I've got a vision in my head and we're just going to stick with it. So we've got semi-gloss black paint. And we're going to go ahead and start hitting this with it. Um, overall, the paint went on fine. It dried fine. Looks good. The uh, thing looks cool in this color, actually. like This color doesn't look too bad. It's almost like a John Boat Green kind of deal. So, you know, you could always just leave it the primer. But we're going to start hitting this thing. I think we are going to do this right side first just to, to play with the paint. It's more open and uh, get the groove before we go hit anything else. So let me get the GoPro on and let's, let's get at it. Oh, 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 oh,
watch your head, boss. Watch your, watch your head. guys here it is we've got a painted John boat now it turned out pretty good I'm happy with it you know besides the texture part on the side of the boat which that's just my fault I shouldn't use that wheel you live and you learn at least it's a John boat and it's meant to get dinged up and it's gonna be going in places where it's gonna get scratched and dented so I'm not you know super worried that's why I left the bottom the way it is that way you know it's not looking all terrible but I'm happy with the way it turned out. You know, you could definitely see the texture up close, but standing two, three feet away, it's you gotta really look at it to notice it. Like once I get some tiny boat nation decals on there, some new C Nymph decals and you know, Nate's decals, all that, it'll look really good, I promise you. With the white decals or whatever color decals I go with, it'll look solid. I did this out of my garage where it's freezing outside, so I had to use a heater to even do this, and the ventilation was a whole nother task because the fumes got pretty bad, but if I could do things a little bit different, I probably would. I wouldn't do it in the winter, and I would probably use paint stripper, or like I said earlier, instead of that wheel, use like a soft brush that will get the paint off. It'll work so much better. They're on Amazon. Just do your research, and I promise you'll find something that'll work better than that, or just use that little black wheel that I showed you guys. I know they make those for angle grinders too, and you can put one on there and go to town. It's going to be an absolute beast of a build. Next up, we've got the subfloor, so I'm excited for that. And then we're getting into framing. So things are starting to get real, guys. We're really starting to put this thing together. It's going to start moving fast, too, because once I get going on the framing, I'm going to be excited. We've got some cool stuff as far as framing from Nate. We're going to be trying something new that hasn't been done before. That way you guys could possibly give it a shot and build one of these boats yourself. With that said, guys, that is going to go ahead and wrap up today's video. If you want to stay tuned, follow the build. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.